Welcome to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We are recording this episode on Tuesday, November 7th. And join me as always, my friend and colleague, Dr. Orfe Divangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, I am looking at what appears to be uh, uh, an unwell patient by virtue of the chart. That chart is the change in the S&P between November 5th, 2021 and November 3rd, 2023. This patient looks like they're about to have a grabber. I mean, it is up, it is down. It, and and here we are heading out of the week of this past week with the S&P up 5.9%. Talk to me about what's going on in the bond market. Talk, talk to me about just what's happening in, in the economy that, you know, in the backbone in the backbone of the economy that we need to clearly understand better. Short-term yields are very responsive to Fed policy moves. Uh, in fact, they move along with the Fed funds rate, right? Uh, the, the, shor- the shortest uh, term, the shortest yield. And so uh, if the Fed is done, short-term yields may have peaked. Fine. You know, I'll believe that. But I think it's premature to think that long-term bond yields, right, the 10-year treasury, 20, 30 year, uh, have peaked already. Um, and, and, and I think that's my, that's my take on this. I think we've seen a lot of movements, uh, with yields coming down and yields came down, I think, because, uh, because of a number of factors. I think the first war, the first one was, uh, you know, gl- the global economic slowdown abroad, right? The conflict abroad, you know, investors run to safety, and so that's going to push down. That's going to push down yields. And then we got a Fed chair that came out being somewhat dovish, right? He started talking about tighter financial and credit conditions, working together to slow down the U.S. economy. And so maybe they don't need to do anymore, right? And so I, and I think in, investors interpreted this as, oh my goodness, the U.S. economy is slowing. Oh my goodness. The global economy is slowing. Oh, my goodness. The Fed could eventually be cutting rates soon, right? The Fed could potentially be buying bonds again. And I think the market is completely wrong. The Fed is shedding bonds off its balance sheet. The balance sheet is massive. It doesn't have the monetary policy. It doesn't have the space to go ahead and rescue the U.S. economy again like it has in the past. And at the same time, there's not a ton of fiscal space, right? The U.S. government doesn't have the room to go ahead and rescue the economy, right? Budget deficits are increasing like crazy. And I think ultimately that it's kind of mistaken to think that even a a slowdown in the U.S. economy is going to engineer uh, some new bond buying by the Fed and that we'll get more fiscal stimulus. It's not going to happen. Inflation is still at about 3.7 percent, still still almost twice the Fed's target. Uh, and so there's no room for that, right? And then the jobs report came came out and it was a little bit on the soft side and investors overreacted and that extended the decline in yields last week. And so we saw this big decline. All right, so here's the thing. If yields decline and financial conditions loosen, guess what happens? It goes against what the Fed is trying to accomplish in order to cool down the economy, right? Remember, they're relying on financial conditions being tighter in order to uh, cool down the U.S. economy. But if financial conditions are actually loosening, right, then you're not going to have the cool down that uh, that they're leaning on, that they're hoping for. And so what do you think is going to happen? We're probably going to see some numbers that inf- investors are going to look at it and going to think, oh my, you know, yes, it, this inflation is still on the way, but maybe it's not coming down as fast as I thought. And maybe 
the Fed's not going to be buying bonds anytime soon. And so we're probably going to have yields going back up again. In fact, that's exactly what we're seeing, a ton of volatility. Yields fell last week. Yesterday, they were back up like 10 basis points or 80. I can't remember. What was the number? It was uh, The yield on the 10-year treasury yesterday was 9.1 basis points to 4.649%. Yeah. And that's after a 29 BPS decline that we Right. Before. So like one third of the way back up. Today, this morning, I wake up and I see it's coming down again a little bit, right? So we're going to see this volatility because I think everybody's waiting for this. Everybody's hoping for Fed cuts. You know, they're pricing it Fed cuts next year. Uh, but I don't, I'm, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, we're ready. I think it's premature to, to call victory uh, on inflation right? Complete victory on inflation. Uh, I believe we're going to still see some disinflation, uh, but it's not going to be as fast as we want. The Fed's probably going to stop raising interest rates, but it might not be cutting uh, anytime soon. You know, unless, of course, unless, of course, we see a big shock in the economy, something completely unexpected that causes, uh, uh, that causes us to fall into negative growth territory for an extended period of time and right and causes a recession uh and so we're not we're not there yet we're not there yet you know when you look at uh productivity growth increased when you look at uh the the fact that the US economy grew at an unbelievable pace in quarter 2 and quarter 3 right we have a big cushion to go right before uh, before we see this big decline, you look at you look at the consumer. Yes, credit cards credit cards have increased a lot, interest costs have increased a lot, but ultimately, total household financial obligations as a share of income are still just above where they were before the pandemic. Uh, so, it's a normalization. I don't see this recession anytime soon. Financial conditions have loosened again. I don't see a recession. So um, the the market kind of overreacted. I think it's going to give back a little bit, and we're probably going to see yields coming back up a little bit uh, in the coming days. Well, you just sullied my uh, my best week, and I think everybody in the market's best week since January. But but you know what? Uh, it's hard to argue with your point of view. For Orfe Divangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com.